Although Holocain and blockchain are very different, because they are both designed to solve some of the same problems, and because people frequently try to understand Holocain in terms of blockchain, we thought it would be a good idea to compare at least one key aspect of Holocain to blockchain. Welcome back to the Investors Cube channel, everyone. In this video, we'll go over what Holocain's core components are, how scalable it is, and if it's tamper-proof. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel to receive future updates before starting to watch it. Holocain's creators started with a simple idea. What if everyone could merely keep their own data and share it with the network as needed? What if everyone could host themselves instead of relying on mining nodes? We could avoid all of this large duplication, which would certainly save us a lot of time and effort. We just have to figure out a means to accomplish that while maintaining data integrity. We'd have to be very certain that no one could ever falsify their data, because everyone represents their own data to the network. That is what Holocain is all about. Holocain is a system for maintaining data integrity in a decentralized application without relying on anybody except the users. Before we get into the video, allow us to mention that nothing mentioned in this video is financial advice, and we are not financial advisors. We would recommend you ensure that you conduct a due diligence process before making any decision that may affect your financial portfolio. If you are looking forward to seeking external advice, head out to your trusted financial advisor, who has a clear idea of your financial situation. Having said that, let us get into this video. People who are knowledgeable with blockchain are generally dubious at this point in the discourse. What's to stop folks from lying about how they're feeling, spending the same amount of money in two distinct places? For example, while Holocain supports much more applications than just money, it's typically convenient to use currency as an example. In a minute, we'll go through some of the Holocain's core components that make this feasible. First, by way of parallel with nature, let's look at the concepts that underpin mechanics starting with some of the tiniest elements. Consider the formation of a molecule of hydrogen chloride by the covalent bonding of a chlorine atom and a hydrogen atom. This necessitates the existence of a free electron in the hydrogen atom, one that is not shared with any other atom. What mechanism does the chlorine atom use to determine whether the hydrogen atom has an electron available? It's self-evident. The hydrogen atom represents whether or not a free electron is present in its current state. It can't lie about whether or not there's a free electron, and it can't double-spend an electron since the availability of an electron is visible to other relevant atoms. On demand, there is worldwide exposure of the local state. It would be absurd to suppose that in order to determine if an atom has a free electron, a worldwide, synchronized ledger of all electrons in the universe is required. Alternatively, the state of the trillions of cells in our bodies should be reported on a worldwide body tracking system, to give a natural example with considerably larger things. The changes are already embodied in the cells. The quantities of oxygen in blood cells, for example, decide whether they supply oxygen in exchange for carbon dioxide to organ tissue cells. Once the blood cells reach the lungs, where they exchange carbon dioxide for new oxygen, the process reverses. The idea of Holocain is that it's unnecessary for all nodes in a decentralized application to keep a record of everyone's state, like blockchain does, or for nodes to establish consensus before a user commits a state update to their own record, as blockchain does. As long as the data structure is tamper-proof, the local embodiment of state can operate as its own authority. Furthermore, only information required for large-scale coordination should be extensively disseminated, with all shared data tightly linked to its source. Holocain is a decentralized computer system that is agent-centric, meaning that the user's agents constitute the system's definitive source of knowledge. Let's take a quick look at some of the architecture that makes Holocain's data structure tamper-proof and scalable now that we've established those concepts. The supply chain. Each user's data is saved locally on their workstation on a source chain, which is a cryptographically signed record of everything you've ever done or said within Holocain apps. Source chains, like blockchains, are hash chains that assign each record or entry a cryptographic fingerprint or hash. Hashes are unique to the data they represent. In a thousand-page book, changing one comma to a period would result in an entirely new hash. Data is published to a shared environment known as a distributed hash table, or DHT. When it needs to be shared with the network, 
all of your tweets and comments in a Twitter-like app, your Uber trip requests, and your modifications in a collaborative document editor are stored on the DHT. Data that does not need to be shared with others can be kept private inside your source chain. In addition to holding their own data, each user of a Holocane app saves a little piece of the app's DHT. DNA the rules for exchanging data are put into the application code, which is referred to as DNA. The DNA identifies this as a tweeting app, which includes sharing data with a certain structure, rather than a vehicle hailing app or a document co-editing app, which involves sharing different data with different structures. It also specifies who is allowed to join the app's network. Is it open to anybody? Do you need an invitation code or to pay? Or are there any additional requirements? Every application user has a copy of the DNA, which implies that any user may check if data transferred to their slice of the DHT complies with the application's rules. But what makes it tamper-proof? Okay, that's a nice structure, but why can't someone just change their source chain and mislead their data to others? A source chain is similar to a diary. Each page has a header that specifies what happened and when it happened, as well as an entry that describes what happened. For example, I sent 100 units of cash to so-and-so. Some of these entries may or may not have been published to the DHT, but the headers, which include the hashes of the entries, are always shared with the DHT. To put it another way, I may or may not have released the contents of a particular diary page, but everyone can see that I wrote anything on it. And they can see the unique fingerprint that corresponds to the contents of the page, which would completely change if I were to ever modify the contents even slightly. But what makes it scalable? The majority of blockchain scalability issues are actually issues with global consensus management. Holocane avoids these issues since it preserves data integrity without the requirement for agreement. There is no requirement for universal consent. Let's stick with the monetary example for a moment. How many computers must authenticate our transaction before it can be carried out? If this were a blockchain, all nodes would have to agree on something and retain a record of our transaction for the rest of time. In Holocane, a transaction is complete when it has been written by only two computers, yours and mine. Then we post the data to the DHT, where it is stored by randomized groups of nodes, so that others may verify for themselves, as needed, that we are appropriately portraying our states. There is no need for a global government. To continue with our previous examples, several forms of data must be published to the network tweets and comments, ride requests, document updates, and so on. It's also true that an app may require system-wide tracking to monitor parts of general activity, much as the body has mechanisms for monitoring and responding to changes in total blood oxygen levels. This is another reason why the DHT frequently requires the storage of some shared data. Unlike a blockchain, each piece of data on the DHT is duplicated only enough times to ensure that the required data is always available, even if the creator is unavailable. This concludes today's video. Thank you for taking the time to watch. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Make sure to turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any fresh information from us. Also, don't forget to share your thoughts about investment. We'll see you all again in our next one. Goodbye till then.